Hey there, good morning. <clears throat> it is 7 a.m. on the 17th of March, 2022. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Hope you guys are well. Hope you had a good night's rest. Hope your day is going to be a, a good one. Today we are in day four of a day f- of, of a five-day study of Psalm 119. Um, it's been amazing and um, just so encouraging and so instructional, right? It's it's like I've been learning so much, and I hope you have been too. Um, as you come in, let us know that you're here. If you have any prayer requests, please put those in the in the chat so that we can lift those up accordingly. There's my mom is here this morning. Piper's wandering wandering around in here exploring. All right. Today's going to be a good day. <clears throat> All right. So today we're going to be in we're we're, do, we're doing four sections. Um just like we did just like we did last night. <clears throat> we're going to do Samak, uh Ayan, Pei and Sadi. Basically Psalm not 119 verses 113 through 144. So do four sections and then we'll finish up with four sections tomorrow. There's Tanya, there's my sister Glenna, there's Barry Hubbard. Good to see you all. All right, let us know as you come in. There's Rosemary, good morning to you. All right, today's St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day to y'all. If you know the story of St. Patrick, it's a beautiful story. St. Patrick was actually not Irish. He was English and was um, taken into captivity and made a slave in Ireland. Okay, And while he was a slave in Ireland, he came to know Christ as his Savior while he was in prison as a slave there in Ireland. Escaped a number of years later, went back to England. But while he was in England, he felt the Lord leading him to go back to Ireland as a missionary and he did that and because of the Lord working through St. Patrick in Ireland a revival broke out hundreds and thousands of people came to know the Lord because of the work of Patrick there the Lord using him in a mighty way there in Ireland and he used the the clover the three-leaf clover Not the four-leaf clover, but he used the three-leaf clover to teach people about the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Those three little leaves. Beautiful story. But it's a great example of how one person, led by the Lord, the difference that they can make. So, St. Patrick's Day is not about wearing green. It's not about any of those kind of things. Um, It's like most holidays. We've kind of made it into something different. But uh, it's a wonderful testimony to the Lord and what he did in the life of Patrick. Morning, Kim Crowley. Good to see you this morning. All right, let's pray. Then we'll we'll jump in. Lord, we just thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day that um, that lies ahead of us. We're we're thankful for um, all that you're going to do. Uh, We're thankful for your presence with us during the day. We're thankful that you never leave us. We're thankful for your gospel. We are so thankful for your word that we can read it and study it and learn about you and draw closer to you and learn who you are, learn who we are in you. Um, Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds today. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So Psalm 119. Here we go. So it starts out Samek, verse 113. He says, I hate those who are double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I wait for your word. Depart from me, evildoers, that I may observe the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your word, that I may live. And do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Uphold me, that I may be safe, that I may have regard for your statutes continually. You have rejected all those who wander from your statutes. For their deceitfulness is useless. You have removed all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you. And I'm afraid of your judgments. Man, what a beautiful way to start the morning. He says, you are my hiding place and my shield. He protects us. 
he gives a sanctuary. There's the, um, I remember another verse that says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. He says, I hate those who are double-minded, but I love your law. You know, being double-minded is never good. <clears throat> what does it mean to be double-minded? It means being divided in our loyalties, in our thoughts. Um, it's, 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 I get the picture of serving two masters, right? Um, serving the world, serving God. You can't do both. You have to serve one or the other. And so here he says, I hate, I hate those who are double-minded. He says, but I love your law. Your law, the word of God, is one way and arguably one of the greatest ways that we cannot be double-minded because our minds are, our minds work this way. Very complex thing, but very oversimplified. You can just think about one thing at a time. And so if you spend time meditating and studying and loving and just jumping in and diving in to the Word of God, and you spend your day, even amidst all the things that you're doing, you spend time meditating on God's Word, your life will be changed. And because you, you can't worry, you can't worry and be Scripture filled at the same time. Because if you know Scripture, you know that the Bible says, so many times to not worry do not fret be, keep your mind on me and so if you're thinking about him you can't think about worry okay or other things psalm 120 uh, 119 verse 121 ion is this section he says i have done justice and righteousness do not leave me to my oppressors be surety for your servant for good do not let the arrogant oppress me my eyes fail with longing for your salvation he said the same thing yesterday and for your righteous word my eyes fail with longing for your salvation and for your righteous word verse 124 deal with your servant according to your loving kindness or your mercy and teach me your statutes i am your servant give me understanding that i may know your testimonies there's a lot of truth in that verse because the bible a lot of people don't read it um, in part because they are intimidated that they will not understand what it says. Well, let me tell you something right now. If you, if you feel like that you're going to understand everything in Scripture, there's no one. The greatest pastors and biblical scholars in the world will tell you they don't understand all the Bible. It is an amazing living book that will be for you what it needs to be when the timing is right. What do I mean when I say that? Here, the writer says, Lord, teach me, give me understanding. That's a wonderful prayer for us to hold as we're entering into the study of Scripture, that we look at the Lord and say, give me understanding, Lord. Let me see. And the Holy Spirit living within you is the one that will let you unlock doors to understanding portions of scripture that you may never have understood before. You're going through a situation, you read a passage of scripture, and you've read it before, it didn't make any sense, now it makes sense. Do you feel like that's your own mental cognitive understanding? No, not, not in part maybe, but mostly, 99% of it, is the fact that the Holy Spirit was says, she needs that right now. He needs that right now. I'm going to make that open to them so they can understand it. So as we, as we study God's word, it's important for us to hold that attitude of, Lord, give me understanding that I may know your statutes. Verse 126, it's time for the Lord to act, for, I have, for they have broken your law. Therefore, I love your commandments above gold. Yes, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem right all your precepts concerning everything. I hate every false way. There's a lot there. He said, the word of God, your commandments, are more important to me than gold. The richest and finest and purest of gold. Gold is one of the most valuable substances that we have here on earth. But yet the writer said, 
the Word of God is way more valuable to me than that. Where does that line up with your life? If you were to say, the Word of, the word of God is more valuable to me than, insert, whatever. Okay? Um, that's the thing that you will have to answer. He says, I esteem right all your precepts concerning everything. That's a great verse because it's reminding us that everything he says is true. Everything. Every single word is true. Okay? I don't pick and choose what I believe. Ooh, I believe that part of the Bible, but not another part of the Bible. That's dangerous. Okay? Pay, 129. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul observes them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth wide and panted, for I long for your commandments. Again, talking about the need for Scripture, the need for the Word of God. Look at this, verse 130, the unfolding of your words. That's a beautiful picture. The unfolding, when you read it, things unfold for you. They open up for you. He says, turn to me and be gracious to me after your manner with those who love your name. Establish my footsteps in your word and do not let any iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man that I may keep your precepts. Look at verse 135. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of water because they do not keep your law. There's, there's, there's regret here we see when we don't uphold the word of God. I'm not sure what Piper's doing back here. All right, to Saudi, which is verse 137. Righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. You have commanded your testimonies in righteousness and exceeding faithfulness. My zeal has consumed me because my adversaries have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure. Psalm 140. Therefore, your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding. Again, another reference to that. Give me understanding that I may live. All right. So what's here? <clears throat> what's here in this last section of, of, the, of today's reading? He says, I look at verse 141. I am small and despised, yet, yet, it's in italics in my Bible, yet I do not forget your precepts. He says, you know what? I'm just me, but, but I don't forget what you told me. Okay. How many times have you felt very small, very diminished, very marginalized, very on the edge? Nobody cares about me. Nobody knows who I am. I'm small and despised. But he says here, but yet I don't forget. I don't forget who you, what you tell me. Because here's what we know. You are worth so much. What's the evidence of that, you say? Well, the evidence of that is that God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you so that if you would have faith in him, that you would put your faith and trust in him to forgive you of your sins, that he would come into your life and be your Lord and your Savior, and he'd forgive you of your sins and reconcile you to holy God. So you are valuable. The Bible says that you were created in the image of God. And to be image bearers, when you go into places, if you are a believer, you're carrying the Holy Spirit with you. You're an image bearer of God. You're made in the likeness of God. So because of that, we have, we carry his essence with us. We carry his Holy Spirit with us into those places. So we're taking that into that place. Okay. The Bible says um, that, that the, the, the temple was a very valuable part of the life of believers in the Old Testament. Well, you and I, the Bible, said, the Bible says this now, that you and I are living temples, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, that we carry him with us wherever we go. And so you are very valuable, very valuable. And then verse 142 says, your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. It doesn't change. And your law is true. There is such thing as absolute truth. <clears throat> it's right here. Okay, that is absolute truth.
We never have to worry about whether the Bible is true or false or questionable. No, don't have to worry about it. It's, it's absolute truth. Every word, every vowel, every consonant, every single word. All right, y'all. Love you. See you in the morning. Let's have a word of prayer. We're going to finish up on Psalm 119 tomorrow. It's been an awesome journey. Next week, we're going to hit the ground running and a lot of small psalms after this one. Hey, Kim and Kim and Diane and Shirley and Donna and Wilma. Good morning to all of you. I love you. Have a good day. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Lord, sustain us. Hold us. Unfold your words to us. Give us understanding. Lord, we ask for those things and we know that you are faithful and that you want us. This is, this is your will that we would understand your word. So Lord, we're thankful for what you're going to do in our lives today. Lord, we lift you up to your proper place. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. Have a great day. Love you. See you tomorrow.